In a world full of machine learning and artificial intelligence surrounding almost everything around us, classification and prediction is one of the most important aspects of machine learning. So guys, today I, Kisle from Adoreka, welcome you all to this session on Naive Bias Tutorial. So before moving forward, let's have a quick look at the agenda. I'll start off this video by explaining you guys what exactly is Naive Bias. Then we'll understand what is Bayes' theorem, which serves as a logic behind the Naive Bias algorithm. Moving forward, I'll explain the steps involved in the Naive Bias algorithm one by one. And finally, I'll finish off this video with a demo on the Naive Bias using the SKLearn package. Now, Naive Bias is a simple but surprisingly powerful algorithm from predictive analysis. It is a classification technique based on Bayes' theorem with an assumption of independence among predictors. It comprises of two parts, which is Naive and Bias. In simple terms, Naive Bias classifier assumes that the presence of a particular feature in a class is unrelated to the presence of any other feature. Even if these features depend on each other or upon the existence of the other features, all of these properties independently contribute to the probability whether a fruit is an apple or an orange or a banana. So that is why it is known as Naive. Now, Naive based model is easy to build and particularly useful for very large data sets. In probability theory and statistics, Bayes' theorem, which is alternatively known as the Bayes' law or the Bayes' rule, describes the probability of an event based on prior knowledge of the conditions that might be related to the event. Now, Bayes' theorem is a way to figure out conditional probability. The conditional probability is the probability of an event happening given that it has some relationship to one or more other events. For example, your probability of getting a parking space is connected to the time of the day you park, where you park, and what conventions are you going on at that time. Bayes' theorem is slightly more nuanced. In a nutshell, it gives you an actual probability of an event given information about the tests. Now, if you look at the definition of Bayes' theorem, we can see that given a hypothesis H and the evidence E, Bayes' theorem states that the relationship between the probability of the hypothesis before getting the evidence, which is the P of H, and the probability of the hypothesis after getting the evidence, that is P of H given E, is defined as probability of E given H into probability of H divided by probability of E. It's rather confusing, right? So let's take an example to understand this theorem. So suppose I have a deck of cards. And if a single card is drawn from the deck of playing cards, the probability that the card is a king is 4 by 52, since there are four kings in a standard deck of 52 cards. Now, if king is an event, this card is a king, the probability of king is given as 4 by 52, that is equal to 1 by 13. Now, if the evidence is provided, for instance, someone looks at the card, that the single card is a face card, the probability of king, given that it's a face, can be calculated using the Bayes' theorem by this formula. Now, since every king is also a face card, the probability of face, given that it's a king, is equal to 1. And since there are three face cards in each suit, that is the jack, king, and queen, the probability of the face card is equal to 12 by 52, that is 3 by 30. Now, using Bayes' theorem, we can find out the probability of king, given that it's a face. So, our final answer comes to 1 by 3, which is also true. So if you have a deck of cards which has having only faces, now there are three types of faces, which are the jack, king, and queen. So the probability that it's a king is 1 by 3. Now this is the simple example of how Bayes' theorem works. Now if we look at the proof, as in how this Bayes' theorem evolved. So here we have probability of A given B, and probability of B given A. Now for a joint probability distribution over the sets A and B, the probability of A intersection B, the conditional probability of A given B is defined as the probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. And similarly, probability of B given A is defined as probability of B intersection A divided by probability of A. Now we can equate probability of A intersection B and probability of B intersection A as both are the same thing. Now from this method, as you can see, we get our final Bayes' theorem proof, which is the probability of A given B equals probability of B given A into probability of B divided by the probability of A. Now while this is the equation that applies to any probability distribution over the events A and B, 
it has a particular nice interpretation in case where a is represented as the hypothesis h and b is represented as some observed evidence e in that case the formula is p of h given e is equal to p of e given h into probability of h divided by probability of e now this relates the probability of hypothesis before getting the evidence which is p of h to the probability of the hypothesis after getting the evidence which is p of h given e for this reason p of h is known as the prior probability while p of h given e is known as the posterior probability and the factor that relates the two is known as the likelihood ratio now using these terms base theorem can be rephrased as the posterior probability equals the prior probability times the likelihood ratio So now that we know the maths which is involved behind the Bayes theorem, let's see how we can implement this in a real life scenario. So suppose we have a data set in which we have the outlook, the humidity, and we need to find out whether we should play or not on that day. So the outlook can be sunny, overcast, rain, and the humidity are high, normal, and the wind are categorized into two features which are the weak and the strong winds. So first of all, we'll create a frequency table using each attribute of the data set. So the frequency table for the outlook looks like this. We have sunny, overcast, and rainy. The frequency table of humidity looks like this. And the frequency table of wind looks like this. We have strong and weak for wind and high and normal ranges for humidity. So for each frequency table, we will generate a likelihood table now. Now the likelihood table contains the probability of a particular day suppose we take the sunny and we take the play as yes and no so the probability of sunny given that we play yes is 3 by 10 which is 0 0.3 the probability of x which is the probability of sunny is equal to 5 by 14. now these are all the terms which are just generated from the data which we have here and finally the probability of yes is 10 out of 14. so if we have a look at the likelihood of yes given that it's a sunny we can see using Bayes theorem it's the probability of sunny given yes into probability of yes divided by the probability of sunny so we have all the values here calculated so if we put that in our base theorem equation we get the likelihood of yes as 0 0.59 similarly the likelihood of no can also be calculated here it's 0 0.40 now similarly we are going to create the likelihood table for both the humidity and the wind so for humidity the likelihood for yes given the humidity is high is equal to 0 0.42 and the probability of playing no given the wind is high is 0 0.58 now similarly for table wind the probability of yes given that the wind is weak is 0 0.75 and the probability of no given that the wind is weak is 0 0.25 now suppose we have a day which has high rain which has high humidity and the wind is weak so should we play or not now so for that we use the base theorem here again now, the likelihood of yes on that day is equal to the probability of outlook rain given that it's a yes into probability of humidity given that it's a yes and the probability of wind that is weak given that it's we are playing yes into the probability of yes which equals to 0 0.019 and similarly the likelihood of no on that day is equal to 0 0.016 now if we look at the probability of yes for that day of playing we just need to divide it with the likelihood sum of both the yes and no so the probability of playing tomorrow which is yes is 0 0.5 whereas the probability of not playing is equal to 0 0.45 now this is based upon the data which we already have with us So now that you have an idea of what exactly is naive bias how it works and we have seen how it can be implemented on a particular data set let's see where it is used in the industry now starting with our first industrial use case which is news categorization or we can use the term text classification to broaden the spectrum of this algorithm news in the web are rapidly growing in the era of information age where each news site has its own different layout and categorization for grouping news now these heterogeneity of layout and categorization cannot always satisfy individual users need 
So remove these heterogeneity and classifying the news articles according to the user preference is a formidable task. Companies use web crawler to extract useful text from HTML pages, the news articles, and each of these news articles is then tokenized. Now these tokens are nothing but the categories of the news. Now in order to achieve better classification result, we remove the less significant words which are the stop words from the documents or the articles and then we apply the nav bias classifier for classifying the news contents based on the news code now this is by far one of the best examples of nav bias classifier which is spam filtering now it's the nav bias classifier are a popular statistical technique for email filtering they typically use bag of words features to identify the spam email an approach commonly used in text classification as well now it works by correlating the use of tokens with the spam and the non-spam emails and then the base theorem which I explained earlier is used to calculate the probability that an email is or not a spam so nave by spam filtering is a baseline technique for dealing with spam that can tailor itself to the emails need of an individual user and give low false positive spam detection rates that are generally acceptable to users it is one of the oldest ways of doing spam filtering with its roots in the 1990s particular words have particular probabilities of occurring in spam email and in legitimate email as well for instance most emails users will frequently encounter the word lottery or the lucky draw in spam email but will seldom see it in other emails the filter doesn't know these probabilities in advance and must be trained so it can build them up to train the filter the user must manually indicate whether a new email is spam or not for all the words in each training email the filter will adjust the probability that each word will appear in a spam or legitimate email in the database now after training the word probabilities also known as the likelihood functions are used to compute the probability that an email with a particular set of words as it and belongs to either category each word in the email contributes the email spam probability this contribution is called the posterior probability and is computed again using the base theorem then the email spam probability is computed over all the words in the email and if the total exceeds a certain threshold say 90 or 95 percent the filter will mark the email as spam now object detection is the process of finding instances of real world objects such as faces bicycles and buildings in images or video now object detection algorithm typically use abstracted features and learning algorithm to recognize instance of an object category here again nave bias plays an important role of categorization and classification of object now medical area produces increasingly voluminous amount of electronic data which are becoming more and more complicated the produced medical data has certain characteristics that make their analysis very challenging and attractive as well among all the different approaches the naive bias is used it is the most effective and the efficient classification algorithm and has been successfully applied to many medical problems empirical comparison of naive bias versus five popular classifiers on 15 medical data sets shows that naive bias is well suited for medical application and has high performance in most of the examined medical problems now in the past various statistical methods have been used for modeling in the area of disease diagnosis these methods require prior assumptions and are less capable of dealing with massive and complicated nonlinear and dependent data one of the main advantages of naive bias approach which is appealing to physicians is that all the available information is used to explain the decision this explanation seems to be natural for medical diagnosis and prognosis that is it is very close to the way how physician diagnose patients now weather is one of the most influential factor in our daily life to an extent that it may affect the economy of a country that depends on occupation like agriculture therefore as a countermeasure to reduce the damage caused by uncertainty in weather behavior there should be an efficient way to predict the weather now weather predicting has been challenging problem in the meteorological department since years even after the technological and scientific advancement the accuracy in prediction of weather has never been sufficient even in current day this domain remains as a research topic in which scientists and mathematicians are working to produce a model or an algorithm that will accurately predict the weather now a bayesian approach based model is created 
by where posterior probabilities are used to calculate the likelihood of each class label for input data instance and the one with the maximum likelihood is considered as the resulting output now earlier we saw a small implementation of this algorithm as well where we predicted whether we should play or not based on the data which we have collected earlier now there is a python library which is known as scikit-learn it helps to build naive bias and model in python now there are three types of naive bias model under scikit-learn library the first one is the caution it is used in classification and it assumes that the feature follow a normal distribution the next we have is multinomial it is used for discrete counts for example let's say we have a text classification problem and here we consider Bernoulli trials which is one step further and instead of word occurring in the document we have count how often word occurs in the document you can think of it as the number of times outcomes number is observed in the given number of trials and finally we have the Bernoulli type of naive bias the binomial model is useful if your feature vectors are binary bag of words model where the ones and the zeros are words occur in the document and the words which do not occur in the document respectively based on your data set you can choose any of the given discussed model here which is the Gaussian the multinomial or the Bernoulli so let's understand how this algorithm works and what are the different steps one can take to create a Bayesian model and use naive bias to predict the output so here to understand better we are going to predict the onset of diabetes now this problem comprises of 768 observations of medical details for Pima Indian patients the record describes instantaneous measurement taken from the patients such as their age the number of times pregnant and the blood work group now all the patients are women aged 21 and older and all the attributes are numeric and the units vary from attribute to attribute each record has a class value that indicate whether the patient suffered on onset of diabetes within five years or the measurements now these are classified as zero now i've broken the whole process down into the following steps the first step is handling the data in which we load the data from the csv file and split it into training and test data sets the second step is summarizing the data in which we summarize the properties in the training data sets so that we can calculate the probabilities and make predictions now the third step comes is making a particular prediction we use the summaries of the data set to generate a single prediction and after that we generate predictions given a test data set and a summarized training data sets and finally we evaluate the accuracy of the predictions made for a test data set as the percentage correct out of all the predictions made and finally we tie it together and form our own model of naive bias classifier now the first thing we need to do is load our data the data is in the csv format without a header line or any quotes we can open the file with the open function and read the data lines using the read functions in the csv module now we also need to convert the attributes that were loaded as strings into numbers so that we can work with them so let me show you how this can be implemented now for that you need to install python on your system and use the jupyter notebook or the python shell here i'm using the anaconda navigator which has all the things required to do programming in python we have the jupyter lab we have the notebook we have the qt console even we have R Studio as well. So what you need to do is just install the Anaconda Navigator. It comes with the pre-installed Python also. So the moment you click launch on the Jupyter Notebook, it will take you to the Jupyter homepage in a local system. And here you can do programming in Python. So let me just rename it as Pima India Diabetes. So first we need to load the data set so i'm creating here a function load csv now before that we need to import certain csv the math and the random method so as you can see i've created a load csv function which will take the pima indian diabetes data.csv file using the csv.reader method and then we are converting every element of that data set into float originally all the elements are in string but we need to convert them into float for our calculation purposes. Now, next we need to split the data into training data sets. 
that naive bias can use to make the prediction and this data set that we can use to evaluate the accuracy of the model we need to split the data set randomly into training and testing data set in the ratio of usually which is 70 to 30 but for this example i am going to use 67 and 33 now 70 and 30 is a common ratio for testing algorithms so you can play around with this number so this is our split data set function now the naive bias model is comprised of summary of the data in the training data set now this summary is then used while making predictions now the summary of the training data collected involves the mean the standard deviation of each attribute by class value now for example if there are two class values and seven numerical attributes then we need a mean and the standard deviation for each of these seven attributes and the class value which makes it the 14 attribute summaries so we can break the preparation of this summary down into the following subtasks which are the separating data by class calculating mean calculating standard deviation summarizing the data sets and summarizing attributes by class so the first task is to separate the training data set instances by class value so that we can calculate statistics for each class we can do that by creating a map of each class value to a list of instances that belong to the class and sort the entire data set of instances into the appropriate list now the separate by class function just does the same so as you can see the function assumes that the last attribute is the class value the function returns a map of class value to the list of data instances next we need to calculate the mean of each attribute for a class value now the mean is the central middle or the central tendency of the data and we use it as the middle of our Gaussian distribution when calculating the probabilities so this is our function for mean now we also need to calculate the standard deviation of each attribute for a class value now standard deviation is calculated as a square root of the variance and the variance is calculated as the average of the square differences for each attribute value from the mean now one thing to note that here is that we are using n minus 1 method which subtracts 1 from the number of attributes values when calculating the variance now, now that we have the tools to summarize the data for a given list of instances we can calculate the mean and standard deviation for each attribute now the if function groups the values for each attribute across our data instances into their own list so that we can compute the mean and standard deviation values for each attribute now next comes the summarizing attributes by class we can pull it all together by first separating our training data sets into instances grouped by class then calculating the summaries for each attribute now we are ready to make predictions using the summaries prepared from our training data making predictions involved calculating the probability that a given data instance belong to each class then selecting the class with the largest probability as a prediction now we can divide this whole method into four tasks which are the calculating Gaussian probability density function calculating class probability making a prediction and then estimating the accuracy now to calculate the Gaussian probability density function we use the Gaussian function to estimate the probability of a given attribute value given the known mean and the standard deviation of the attribute estimated from the training data as you can see the parameters are x mean and the standard deviation now in the calculate probability function we calculate the exponent first then calculate the main division this lets us fit the equation nicely into two lines now the next task is calculating the class probabilities now that we can calculate the probability of an attribute belonging to a class we can combine the probabilities of all the attributes values for a data instance and come up with the probability of the entire data instance belonging to the class so now that we have calculated the class probabilities it's time to finally make our first prediction now we can calculate the probability of the data instance belonging to each class value and we can look for the largest probability and return the associated class and for that we are going to use this function predict which uses the summaries and the input vector which is basically all the probabilities which are being input for a particular label now finally we can estimate the accuracy of the model by making predictions for each data instances in our test data for that we use the get predictions method now this method is used to calculate the predictions based upon the test data sets and the summary of the training data set now the predictions can be compared to the class values in our 
test data set and classification accuracy can be calculated as an accuracy ratio between the zeros and the hundred percent now the get accuracy method will calculate this accuracy ratio now finally to sum it all up we define our main function we will call all these methods which we have defined earlier one by one to get the accuracy of the model which we have created so as you can see this is our main function in which we have the file name we have the defined the split ratio we have the data set we have the training and test data set we are using the split data set method next we are using the summarize by class function we are using the get prediction and the get accuracy method as well so guys as you can see the output of this one gives us that we are splitting the 768 rows into 514 which is the training and 254 which is the test data set rows and the accuracy of this model is 68 percent now we can play with the amount of training and test data sets which are to be used here so we can change the split ratio to 70s to 30 80s to 20 to get different sort of accuracy so suppose i change the split ratio from 0.67 to 0.8 so as you can see we get the accuracy of 62 percent so splitting it into 0.67 gave us a better result which was 68 percent so this is how you can implement a naive bias caution classifier these are the step-by-step -step methods which you need to do in case of using the naive bias classifier but don't worry we do not need to write all this many lines of code to make a model this is where the scikit-learn library comes into picture the scikit-learn library has a predefined method or i'll say a predefined function of naive bias which converts all of these lines of course into merely just two or three lines of codes so let me just open another jupyter notebook so let me name it as sklearn naive bias now here we are going to use the most famous data set which is the iris data set now the iris flower data set is a multivariate data set introduced by the british statistician and biologist roland fisher and based on this fisher's linear discriminant model this data set became a typical test case for many statistical classification techniques in machine learning so here we are going to use the gaussian nb model which is already available in the sklearn learn as i mentioned earlier there were three types of naive bias which are the gaussian multinomial and the bernoulli so here we are going to use the Gaussian NB model, which is already present in the sklearn library, which is the scikit-learn library. So first of all, what we need to do is import the sklearn data sets and the metrics, and we also need to import the Gaussian NB. Now, once all these libraries are loaded, we need to load the data set, which is the iris data set. Now, next, what we need to do is fit a naive bias model to this data set. So as you can see we have so easily defined the model which is the Gaussian NB which contains all the programming which I just showed you earlier all the methods which are taking the input calculating the mean the standard deviation separating it by class then finally making predictions and calculating the prediction accuracy all of these comes under the Gaussian NB method which is inside already present in the sklearn library we just need to fit it according to the data set which we have here so next if we print the model we see which is the gaussian nb model now next what we need to do is make the predictions so the expected output is data set dot target and the predicted is using the predicted model and the model we are using is the gaussian nb here now to summarize the model which we created we calculate the confusion matrix and the classification report so guys as you can see the classification report we have the precision of 0.96 we have the recall of 0.96 we have the f1 score and the support and finally if we print our confusion matrix as you can see it gives us this output so as you can see using the gaussian nb method just putting it under the model and using any of the data set fitting the model which you created into a particular data set and getting the desired output is so easy with the scikit-learn library so guys this is it i hope you understood a lot about the naive bias classifier how it is used where it is used and what are the different steps involved in the classification technique and how the scikit-learn makes 
all of those techniques very easy to implement in any data set which we have. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!